Well, good afternoon. Excited about uh, the week and getting into Big 12 play. Um, everything kind of gets magnified. It game's a little faster, uh, more physical, uh, and uh, we've got to come up with great game plans, both sides of the ball, uh, to go on the road and, and play a really good Oklahoma State team that um, uh, has beaten us the last two years. And we're in the similar situation we were in 2019. We started off well in the non-con and have to, had to go on the road against uh, Oklahoma State and uh, didn't fare well, and and uh, some of our older guys do recall that, and um, they got after us pretty well. So uh, it's tough environment always to play in in Stillwater, and our guys know that. So we've got to work a lot of noise this week uh, to prepare our guys and um, continue to improve. We we have to continue to get better. We got to get better in a lot of areas. Uh, special teams is one that uh, we need to emphasize this week. We we can't uh, have penalties on special teams. We continue to hurt ourselves that way. Uh, and then uh, uh, just continuing to play more guys on defense and and, and tackle well, and then offensively uh, to try to rush the football, uh, and then obviously open it up a little bit more in the passing game. Uh, that some sometimes that's more dictated on what your opponent does. And uh, Oklahoma State's got a tremendous defense, so we'll have our hands full. So we'll open up for questions. Uh, Chris, can you give us an update on both Khalid and Skyler, where they're at right now? Yeah, Khalid's going to be done for the year. He he uh, had a uh, lower leg injury, so we're sorry to hear because Khalid's a really good football player. Um, and then Skyler just continues with his rehab. He's not ready yet. Um, you mentioned working noise this week. What kind of what, what are you talking about during practice to get him acclimated uh, to the environment? A lot of noise, crowd noise. Uh, all periods of the day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, to help our offense, you know, like we do when we're at home, we do it on Wednesday and Thursday to help our defense just because it's uh, 2020. You didn't have to worry about that stuff. And now you do. And uh, it's obviously an impact. So uh, we'll have crowd noise pumped in uh, all three days. Uh, question about your defense to average under two yards per rush this season is what you're allowing. Um, it doesn't, you know, on paper seem to make sense. You go from four linemen to three that the rush would improve that much. But why, why, why has it worked out that way? Well, we played really well against Stanford. Uh, and I don't know if we surprised them or not uh, with the defense we were playing, uh, but played really well there. And then um, Southern Illinois, I thought, had really good schemes offense uh, on offense to rush the ball and throw the ball. And I can't remember how we fared there, but Nevada was a throwing team. Uh, and we tried to make them one-dimensional, and we were able to do that. But that wasn't their bread and butter. Their bread and butter was getting the ball in the quarterback's hands and letting him spin it around. So, um, you know, we're, we're running to the football well. It doesn't matter what front you have. We're tackling and running through our leverage better. Uh, but uh, this is going to be an exceptional rushing team that we're going to face in Oklahoma State. They can beat you in a lot of ways, uh, but uh, I know against Boise, they were able to rush the football successfully, and we have to be able to – we're not going to stop them. We have to be able to limit some of their explosive plays. Going back the last two years, uh, Oklahoma State handled you guys. Is there any theme that runs through those two games? No, and last year I thought we had an opportunity to win. I don't know if you'd say they'd handled us last year. Um, we had an opportunity to win and, and, and played a pretty good football game, uh, but they found a way to win in the fourth quarter, give them credit. Um, and in 2019, uh, they got after us, uh, I thought, pretty well up front, both sides of the ball and, and controlled the game. So uh, every year's a, a new year, and um, you know a lot of guys played in both games, and then there's a lot of new guys that, that haven't played in the game. So... Uh, every week is a little bit different, um, and every obviously every year and every team is a little bit different. You and Oklahoma State haven't shown a consistent passing game. Not that you can't, you just haven't shown it this year. How's, how's that impact preparation? Well, uh, I'm sure they're working on theirs just like we're working on ours, but um, I think both teams are off to a 3-0 and start, and I'd rather be 3-0 and and uh, then 0 and 3 and have been able to throw the heck out of the thing. So uh, you find ways to, to manufacture wins and uh, both teams have been able to do that. And, and both teams have been able to win close ball games. And I think that's going to help um, probably both teams as we get into conference play. I think it's important that you play tight ball games. Nobody, you know, you don't like to have it for your stress level, but uh for the pressure of the players, I, I think it's important that they have to be able to play four quarters. And, um, you know, I know it's helped us uh, to be able to, we've been successful 
uh, in the fourth quarter uh, of our first three games uh, because of great focus and preparation, guys in good shape. Uh, and uh, for us to win, we've got to be able to win a four quarter game. Do you find yourself as a coach, uh, you mentioned it, you run the ball every play and you win, mm -hmm. you're happy, but you do need to balance in the passing attack for recruiting, for the locker room, for all those other things. Absolutely you do. Uh, and we're smart enough to realize that we're not going to be successful in the Big 12 um, rushing the ball 13 times a game. We had we kind of talked about that to our players at the team meeting yesterday uh, was we have to throw the football with uh, more efficiency, more, more success, and just more in general for us to, to be a factor in this league. All that being said, last week against Nevada, because of the nature of their offense of going five, four and five wides and emptying it out, our, one of our best defenses was keeping that offense on the sideline. And so uh, the game plan dictated that, plus they were allowing us to rush the football. And uh, yeah, Coach Mess, it's another reason why Coach Mess is coaching the wide receivers as well as calling plays is um, he's talking with those wide receivers on a daily basis about what we have to do to continue to improve uh, our passing game. And, and uh, I know that uh, it's going to be a conscious effort that we make. Last week, obviously, you went in with the plan to use both quarterbacks. Is that going to be the, the case once again this week? Yeah, where it's early in the week. Um, I really haven't had a conversation with uh, uh, Mess and Colin about that specifically, other than I think we saw that both both players give us an opportunity to be successful. Both players deserve the opportunity to play. So um, they're both going to be ready to play without question. And uh, I think our, our football team knows that uh, both guys can uh, get behind center and, and help us win. Some of the players after the game on, on Saturday expressed some frustration with being on ESPN Plus for a third straight week. Do you take it as any kind of slight at all? No, I, I guess I don't I don't think about that. I, I, I heard that as well. Um, you know, control what you can control. And uh, uh, we have no control over that uh, as, as a football team and as a coaching staff. So our, our job is to prepare the guys best we can to have an opportunity to be successful. Is it in any way a recruiting disadvantage, just having to tell someone if you're going to watch, you'd have to pay? I, I couldn't tell you that. Uh, I, I don't think so. Chris, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, run defense. Just what is the mentality that, that a defense has to have in order to have a very successful rush defense? Well, gap integrity is the first thing. Everybody knowing where they fit within the run scheme, whether it's inside run, outside run, quarterback run, um, ability to, to get off blocks. And I, and I know that's an area that we are improving on compared to uh, where we've been the last two years is, you know, shedding blocks and then uh, uh, being sound open field tacklers, uh, having more hats to the football and knowing where you can miss and you don't want to miss tackles, but if I miss it to my correct leverage and, and hit that with some speed, I know that uh, the inside part of the cup or inside part of leverage is coming. And so we've done a nice job of that thus far. And we've got to continue to em emphasize it. There were some times we had some letdowns in all three games where we felt like, whether it's a, a run defense or a perimeter uh, pass defense, that we could be a little bit better in tackling. Uh, and it's hard to practice tackling on a daily basis uh, with all the rule changes. So it's a conscious effort for us to continue to emphasize running through our leverage attack uh, at the ball, at the line of scrimmage, getting guys in, in the backfield just seems really impressive uh, this year. What, what's, what's been the big change, uh, the big improvement? Cutting, cutting those guys loose, um, you know, uh, letting – we've got some really good defensive linemen. We've been able to play some speed packages with our three down. We've been able to play three defensive tackles in there. We've had a mixture of, uh, of both, um, having guys like Trussell and, and Felix and Boom out there, as well as, you know, Pick and, and uh, Huggins and, and Timmy Horn together. I think keeping fresh bodies out there, the guys knowing uh, that they're going to be fresh because we're rotating guys, I think that's important. Uh, and then, you know, just getting off blocks and, and, and being disruptive and not reading, but being, you know, aggressive and, and penetrating, I think that helps.
Nate, Nate, Matlack, Nate Matlack had his number called in Khalid Duke's absence. How did he respond? Nate did a nice job, and, and uh, he's another guy that is getting more snaps uh, on a weekly basis. This is probably, you know, he's going to have to have more snaps, especially in some of our third down packages. Um, and uh, he's ready for that role. Uh, he's a tremendous young player that continues to improve. He has a great motor that everybody has seen. Um, we just see him getting so much better with his technique, as well as being strong, physical, and, and really athletic that can run. As on their reverse pass, as soon as the receiver opened his hips, Julius Prince is pointing. How much has that veteran-type savvy benefited your defense this season? Well, all of our guys are communicating better. That's one of the things that uh, we talk about on a daily basis on both sides of the ball is, is, you know, we have to have high level communication, physicality and communication have to be uh, at a high level um, every day, not just on Saturdays. And so we're trying to uh, continue to emphasize that and uh, just the kids knowing the situation and uh, we didn't defend it great, but uh, the fact that he knew it was coming uh, and saw it is, is encouraging, but uh um, you know, we, we gave up two explosive plays to an explosive offensive team. One was on a trick play and the other one, uh, their great receiver hit us down the seam. But I think mess had us as a, a 10 to five advantage in how we uh, tabulate explosive plays. And so we won the explosive play battle and we won the turnover battle. And that's always going to be critical. We need to play air free football. How do you balance that aggressive play with being assignment sound on a play such as that? Well, uh, you still have your rules and principles, um, and everybody has a job to do. We, we missed the contain on the play. That was probably the bigger issue. We missed the contain um, where we should have had, uh, somebody upfield. Uh, regardless, um, uh, we, we've still got to keep our eyes in coverage. You know, we, they kind of high load us on it, and so good play and good call by those guys. What you've seen out of Oklahoma State, what is it about their defense that makes them tough to go against? Well, they don't give you any easy things. That's probably the one thing that I've noticed in watching them the last couple of years. You, you've got to work for everything you get, whether it's a 10-yard uh, pass to a six-yard run. They, they crowd the line of scrimmage, so to speak, but they don't give up explosive plays. Uh, we were able to get them on a couple of uh, plays that we really designed well uh, last year, uh, one on a throw and a couple on a run with Will. But uh, – uh, they're just tough because they they are disciplined. They're they're physical, uh, and they don't. They're not going to give you like easy access throws and play their corners off at nine yards and say, okay, we'll give you a quick hitch or something. They're going to make you earn everything that you that you have, and and that's a sign of a an aggressive defense. They they blitz some, uh, and then they play just some tight quarters, tight man tight tight man to man coverage. And I know it's hard to evaluate uh, in the moment, but now that you've had time to look back at it a little bit, what did you think the offensive line did best against Nevada? Sustain blocks, I guess, more than anything is sustain blocks and communicate uh, all the blitzes that they were doing because Nevada was blitzing us an awful lot. And the kids were able to pass off a lot of those blitzes uh, because of communication on the sideline and then communication in play. Uh, of some of the stunts they were running, and we were able to sustain blocks. And I thought our wide receivers did a really nice job sustaining blocks. Uh, we threw some bubble screens that maybe could have been a yard or two, and we, we hold our blocks a little bit longer in their six or seven yards and uh, moving the chains and, and our tight ends and fullbacks. I thought Nick Lenners had one of his best games of, of blocking, did a great job, um, and uh, we're going to need that moving forward. We have to be able to sustain blocks by everybody on offense. A lot more snaps for Reggie Stubblefield this past Saturday. Was that a product of just playing more nickel, or is he improving that much? Probably a little bit of both, uh, but the biggest thing is it, we knew they were going to be in a spread set, and we thought uh, uh, or feel he gives us a better better chance to be successful playing as much man coverage as we had to play last week. It was just the type of game for Reggie. On the flip side, he didn't play much against Stanford. It was more – uh, Henny and Wayne because it was more multiple tight ends. Um, all, all of them played somewhat against Southern. And so every week might be a little bit different based on what the offense does. See what you wanted to see out of Hadley Panther in his first action of meaningful football? Did a really nice job. Uh, Noah and I talked about him yesterday in the captain's meeting, and Noah was really excited for him. He, uh, he said he was excited in the huddle but was calm and under control. Uh, and he's going to continue to help us and, and get 
more and more meaningful snaps as he becomes comfortable, but he played really physical and did a great job communicating. How much different of a challenge? Obviously, Will got starting experience on the road last year, but going into a full capacity night crowd at, at Oklahoma State, just how much different will that challenge be for him? Oh, it'll be different for sure. Uh, it'll be a big challenge. And I think the, the experience of him having a, a lot of snaps, uh, no question helps, but now we have to, you know, put him in some of those adverse conditions in practice so that um, it's a lot of hand signals or however we're going to uh, communicate snapping the football. We've got to do a great job so that uh, he feels comfortable. The old line feels comfortable. Um, we need to do the same thing with Jaron just to make sure that uh, those guys understand that because it, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a way different uh, atmosphere when you're doing it in front of 50, 60, 70,000 people. And it's uh, it's really loud, and, and certain times it gets louder and louder, and sometimes it's even loud calling the play. You know, we typically turn the noise on when we come to the line of scrimmage. You know, we need to turn it on, and we'll turn it on as we're in the huddle. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You're doing that, but then the defense is trying to communicate on the other end. But the previous two weeks, we've had it loud for the defense and the offense. So uh, we've dealt with noise the last three weeks because we've done it uh, at practice in the stadium, so both teams have to be able to handle it. You obviously have two running backs playing at a pretty high level right now. In an ideal world, would, would you like to get Jacardia Wright more work? Or yeah, is that just right and now? Um, we had talked about that uh, a, a little bit on Sunday. He's another guy that uh, no different than a wide receiver or a tight end uh, of having some catches that um, um, we need to get him the football. We need to find some ways to, to implement him. The other two guys are playing so well uh, but he had a couple of really good blocks when he was out there uh, and uh, we're going to need him. And so um, I know that coach Anderson and coach mess have, have talked about that within the game plan, but it's everybody has, when your opportunity comes, I don't care if it's uh, the extra running back to any of our wide receivers or tight ends to a defensive player. When you get an opportunity to, uh, to play significant snaps, um, got to make the most of it. For the solid win against Nevada and Oklahoma State, they are coming off a win to which they um, beat Boise State on the road. They got the win late, and their both teams are going into the game with momentum. Just for you, how's exciting it to be a part of a Big 12 opener that has momentum and excitement to come along with it? Well, it's, it's just fun to be a part of starting conference play. You know, we talk about conference play uh, all off season and, uh, all preseason about how difficult this league is week in and week out. Uh, and so what you try to do leading up to conference play is just prepare your, your guys and prepare your team as best we can, uh, to handle some of the adversity and, and, and handle some of the situations that are going to come up, come our way. And the three non-conference games, this was a really, really difficult non-conference schedule, three teams that are going to win an awful lot of games. Um, and we were fortunate that we uh, found a way uh, each of those Saturdays to be successful. Coach, you mentioned the play of Hadley Panzer. At what level and what determination is it made that what stage of the game that he's inserted is what goes into that? Yeah, uh, Coach Riley, um, communicating with uh, the offensive lineman, how we're going to do it. It's no different than what we did with with Jaron, whether it's the third series, fourth series. Coach Riley kind of goes about uh, that business throughout the week uh, of letting the guys know when they're going to uh, get their reps. It's We have that at every position. You know, we Austin Moore knows when he's going to go in the game and replace Cody Fletcher. Our D-line know what our rotation is. Our corners know what our rotation is. And so all those things kind of take place, take hold during the week so that on Saturday, nobody's kind of surprised when they're playing. Did you assess Carver Willis's progress? Carver's doing a really good job. It's just that Cooper Beebe's playing at such a high level uh, that uh, – uh, Cooper's just a guy that is hard for us to take off the field. It's nothing that Carver Willis is doing. Carver Willis is still a young player. He's a, a red shirt freshman or true freshman, depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, that's continuing to get bigger and stronger, and he knows our offense well. But Cooper Beebe is, in my opinion, an all Big 12 offensive lineman. And so um, he's a guy that we need to keep in the game. Chris, if you can. I guess narrow it down a little bit into a Cliff's Notes type version, but what you've seen from Jaron Lewis that since you've got on campus to now, because he hasn't had a lot of snaps, but 
now he's in a position where he's going to get more snaps. What have you seen from him? The maturity uh, is the first thing. Um, and I think uh, it, hit, it hit home to him last fall when uh, Will went in, went in the game and when Skyler got hurt. And uh, he's a prideful kid. He's a great, great person to be around. And, and he's really smart. And uh, I know in the, uh, at the end of the season or shortly in the off season, he and I had a conversation that he wanted to be in the mix. And he knew he had to uh, probably go about his business a little bit better. Uh, and he was going to attack it. And he did. And we saw that in the spring. He got better and better in the spring. Uh, to where he closed the gap uh, somewhat uh, on on Will's Will's experience factor and the fact that Will played uh, in 2020 and Jaron didn't. And then we just saw it in fall camp because we go so much good on good and we rotate guys in and out. Uh, we just said, this guy just keeps getting better and he keeps making some big time plays, whether it's a run or a throw, uh, that uh, when we lost Skyler, we wanted to make sure we were in a position that if something happened to, to Will, that Jaron was ready to help us. And uh, just so happened that uh, uh, when Skyler got hurt, it was the opportune time for us to say, okay, Jaron, you're going to take some snaps. And um, he responded really well. And that's the thing. You ask the old lineman, they're like, coach, it was great. There was no, because you always worry about, is there a change in cadence? Is there a change in the, in, in how the game operation is? And the offensive lineman said, no, it was really comfortable having both guys in there. And that makes us feel really good as a staff if the one or two areas that you reference where he's made those strides, what are those? Um, just understanding our offense and our system and understanding and reading defense is better. I know he returned to the game, but any lingering effects from Josh Rivas when he went down? No, he practiced yesterday, so Rivas will be good to go. Uh, the defense players have expressed is it, it, they talk about wanting to bring back a mob mentality. How would you define that? And how have they been able to maybe uh, foster that identity? Well, they want to play with excitement and all that is, is mind on ball, meaning our minds got to be on the football, um, whether it's interceptions to mind on the, on the ball as it's handed off or thrown. And that's what it, what, what we're trying to do is create some excitement for those guys because defense has to be played with passion, with energy, um, with discipline. And um, we all knew we need to be better on defense. And so uh, I'm proud of our guys because they have, they play with a lot of energy, a lot of passion. I think um, we've got a long ways to go, but I think all of us have seen this is a different group on defense and it's exciting to watch. And um, yeah, we had a celebration penalty. Don't want it to happen. Uh, but uh, let those kids have some fun, and that's what they're doing right now. And I, I'm I'm proud of what we've done so far. We got a long ways to go because we got a great league in front of us, but we're making significant improvements on defense. Thank you so much. You bet. Chris, I was wondering how you evaluated the wide receivers through the first three games. Um, probably. Not a great body of work to be able to. It's not. It's not on them. Uh, I think Philip and Malik are, are doing some really good things, like we knew they would. Uh, and uh, Landry's doing some really good things. We're blocking exceptionally well. Uh, we're we're being selfless in that respect. Uh, and the fact that uh, when you're in that locker room last uh, last Saturday, and we're celebrating a big win, or you're in the locker room at AT and T Stadium, and we're celebrating a big win. Um, it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative, which we all went through last year. And so our, our guys have to, I mean, that's what coach mess keeps, keeps saying to the guys, man, this is still a team game and you got to be excited about, uh, the success we have as a team. All of us want to have more success individually. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And, uh, winning football is hard to do. I'm just telling you, winning games is hard to do and, uh, however we can do it, we're going to do that. Um, but we know we need to get the, the receivers and tight ends more involved in the pass game. That's the bottom line. Is it a bit more difficult to evaluate them just when you've had roughly 80 more rushing attempts than, than passes? Oh, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. But that's why we practice. And that's why we go against each other all the time so that we can continue to evaluate guys, you know, uh, and we've got some guys making really good strides uh, out there at wide receiver. I think Jalen Travis, who missed most of fall camp is starting to be the Jalen Travis that I knew he was in the spring, 
but it's hard when you miss every bit of installation in fall camp and now he's coming back and, and he's getting acclimated back. He's going to be a really good football player for us. Just hasn't had the opportunity. His opportunity will come. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Green is obviously off to a great start. What, what has been the difference do you think for him this year? Uh, he's focused on, on having a great year. He had a great off season. He put on 13 or 14 pounds. He put on about another 12 or 13 pounds of lean muscle mass. Um, he's just stronger. He's quicker. He is spending more time in the film room. Um, he's doing everything of the intangibles that allow you to have a chance to be successful out on the field and, um, taking care of his body and watching film, all those things go a long way. And you can see that on the field with his production because he's playing the game really fast. Got one question on Zoom. Got one question on Zoom. Go ahead, McKenzie. Hi, Coach. Sorry uh, if you touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, you talk a lot about the run game and stopping the run. Jalen Warren had over 200 yards, two touchdowns, and 32 carries against Boise State. How focused are you guys on him specifically and stopping the run this Saturday? Well, we're, we're focused on their entire rushing offense because I think uh, uh, Sanders is also a big part of that because when you have the threat of him running the football, uh, it can pull somebody out and then it even gives those backs more of an opportunity, but, uh, uh, they did a great job controlling the line of scrimmage against Boise, um, did not get arm tackled and, uh, just, uh, it was a, a clinic on, on how to rush the football. And, and so for us to be successful, we've got to try to slow those guys down. You mentioned the excessive celebration penalty. Well, during that celebration, some of the defensive players were throwing up the whole old mob sign that we saw from old defenses back in the day, which they're probably weren't even born yet, or maybe they're babies. Yep. Do you know how that got on their radar and how they started embracing the mob mentality? Probably because we have a lot of former players that I asked to come back and, and talk to the team because they, they laid the foundation for all of us to be successful. We watch a lot of videos uh, about K-State of the past because why we have all this great stuff is what coach Schneider did and all those players did. And I think it's just trying to carry on some of the legacy that uh, was built before us and try to honor those guys. You bet. Thanks. Have a great week.